Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. We've got custom 3v3 action on the cards this afternoon. First of all, the promotion that I should have probably done yesterday, but as you know, I completely forgot my responsibilities. But Stops, or Stoops, has forgiven me. It was him who I uh, basically ignored the day before and he's forgiven me. Uh, which is nice to know. As long as I remember to promote it now, which I'm going to, it's the Stack Wizards Tourney. Not sure what the significance is there of the title. If someone knows, pop it in the comments section below. Uh, but it's going to be a 4v4 tourney with no rating limit. So you can get some pretty pimp teams together if you know the right people. Very exciting stuff. Um, the tourney itself is going to go down uh, on the 21st of this month. So that's in like three days. It's the 18th today. So sign-ups... Uh, have a limited amount of time. If you want to get involved, you guys really need to get on it. The winners will get a avatar, which you can hold on to till the next iteration of the tourney. And uh, I will put a link to the forum thread with all the details regarding the, uh, the tournament in the description below this video. And if it's not there, you know what to do. Just give me a shout until I make it so, and I shall do just that. All right, on to today's game. As we said, it's going to be a custom 3v3, and the map of the day is going to be Open Palms. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. Open Palms in anything other than a 1v1 format. Can't imagine how long it's been since we saw it used in its proper sense as a 3v3. And the best part of it is, is for once, the user interface agrees with me that up at the top left is Team 1 over here and down here at the bottom right is Team 2. So go first for Team 1 over here. In Regal Purple we have Nequilich. He's going Cybrin and uh, he's opening first land. Team member number 2 for Team 1 up at the Nook is Eternity. Also going Cybrin in Cyanide Scion opening first land. Over in the East in Volvo Beige, we have Gently also going Cybrin, so it's a clean sweep in the Cybrin faction there for Team 1. And he is opening first land over to Team 2 down at the bottom. First of all, in Vivacious Violet, we have Flexible also going Cybrin. This is like my worst nightmare so far. And he is opening first land onto the Nook in Halley Borange Orange. Thank goodness, Aero Clouds has some taste. He's chosen something other than Cyber. He's going Aeon, opening first land, and last but not least, over at the other side of the map, it's Congreve also going Cyber in Pontiff White on the move there and having started first land. Great to see Congreve though. I'm telling you, all the pros are coming back. It's such an exciting time to be alive. Initial moles out for just about everybody since it's almost a clean sweep throughout with the exception of course of Aero Clouds for the Cybran Nation. Making me so sad. When is the Cybran nerf coming? Zok, I know you're Cybran and I know you're Balance Counselor but come on show some love to the other factions dude or nerf Cybran or do something. We need more flexibility here. Mole there for Congreve strolling straight into Nequilich's base. He's going to blap that aside with one bolt of energy there from the ACU. Another mole coming in now down from Eternity, heading straight on towards Aero Cloud. He's going to come across an engineer first of all. If he carries on pushing forward though, might bump into Aero Cloud's ACU. Is he going to notice the threat? He's just going to let it roll straight on by, maybe pick it up with an Aurora out of that rear land factory in the near future. In comes a Mantis and a Mole now from Flexible, going straight after one of the uh, outlying engineers for Gently. Gently not going to be allowing this to pass without at least putting up some kind of fight. He's going to bring his ACU off the job that he was working on and try and chase those units down. Not going to manage it. Of course, the ACU slower than just about everything else on the field. So uh, flexible, pulling those units off and pushing them in around the back of the Nook. A Mantis there from Congreve. Couple of Mantis trying the run by. One of the two are going to make it through. The other one is going to get picked off by a defending Mantis there from the Quillage. Meanwhile, a bomber out over in the east from Gently. That's harassing Flexible and has managed yet to get any kills on the cards, which is funny because it looks like we had Rex there for a moment, but it turns out no, that was just some trees. Another Mantis out 
from Gently this time, succeeding on the run by. So we've got units in the back from both teams now. That uh, first run by we saw from Flexible now turning around. He's picked off one of the two rear mass extractors for Gently's base. He's working on a second. He's not going to get through it though before defending Mantis is going to pick him off. He will get it down into the red, but it will survive on around 104 hit points. The mole sitting next to him is going to go down as well. Congreve trying his luck on the other side of the map as well. He's also taken down one of the mass extractors in the rear for Nequilich and now working on the other one. Two Mantis in place now and nothing in the area for Nequilich except for the Mantis up here. He's only got 70 hit points left on board and he's going to stroll unwisely close to those two units and uh, he won't be writing home to Mama anytime soon either. So lots of little bands of Mantis now out for all of these guys. We've also got an ACU on the move there over in the east. Flexible moving up the northeastern edge of the map. Gently is going to pull his ACU off to defend on that side of things. Mantis and Engineers working on some point defense there, trying to seal off that avenue of attack. More Mantis rolling in and a nice split there from Flexible, avoiding Gently's ACU to potentially going to get in around the back once again, while the rest wheel right to team up with a larger force heading in from Flexible's main base. That T1 point defense is going to complete, so Flexible can't really continue to push forward, not really without any Medusas in tow. A wise decision would be to finish off the Hydro. And it looks like he might be going for that as we switch over to the southwest and take a look at what's going on between Nequilich and Congreve. Well, Congreve looking like he's posturing to get some more units into Nequilich's base. Nequilich does have a decent amount of T1 spam on the ground. The plateaus are now being taken. We've had distance builds from both Congreve and Gently on Team 1, getting land factories up over the ledge there and are now getting engineers in place to pick up the mass extractors. Congreve slightly further ahead than his mirror on the opposite side of the map. Gently and flexible now exchanging fire between the two ACUs, both on around 7,000 hit points apiece. The hydrocarbon still online after the initial pressure from flexible. It's on around 600 hit points or so. If we zoom out, take stock of what's going on in the general field, we can stop and take a look at the mass totals. Team 2 slightly ahead in accrued mass overall. Looks like 21, 22k to about 19 and a half k, something like that that 77 generated mass compared to 65 totals though in flux all the time of course and now eternity joins gently on that side of the map and flexible doesn't like the look of that 2v1 acu pressure he is going to withdraw very sensible decision indeed and what should be largely an air player is setting out an awful lot of ground spam and is pushing east and that may be in part due to the amount of pressure that was on Gently in that area of the map. There is now an awful lot of ground forces moving in from the center there from Eternity. Flexible, well, he's not too far behind in the uh, Mantis game when you consider the amassed forces between these two. We're gonna just take a look at general numbers on this side of things. So we've got 19 Mantis on the ground there for Nequilich. Eternity has about 28 rolling in towards the center on his own. We do have some more, of course, coming in from Gently as well. A couple of Mantis make, make it right the way down the edge there, and it looks like they've been successful in taking out a couple of those mass extractors. Eternity pushing very far forward now. Indeed, we've got engineers working on point defense in the main base, and Aero Clouds pulls his ACU out as well to assist Flexible now that it looks the tables have turned on that side of the map. He's also starting to focus a little bit more heavily on land spam. In comes a column of Auroras to assist. 
eternity getting up front picking off the odd mantis as they come into range and now once again we're going to get some fire traded between the two acus aero clouds rolling in the question is has eternity seen that but yeah he's got more than enough visual coverage from those scout planes flying in overhead and this is pretty sizable engagement kicking off now probably the largest we've seen of the engagement so far eternity pops into the yellow dipping into the 7000 hit point range aero cloud still pretty much fresh flexible there going into the yellow as well but not a single upgrade on any of the ACUs on this side of the map at all. Gently rolling forward and trying to scoop up as much mass as he can before rolling out, trying to mitigate the amount of mass that will be flowing into Team 2's coffers from the recent series of attacks that have been directed at Flexible. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the Quillage sitting on around 6,400 hit points and Congreve on about 5,800 but Congreve now getting an upgrade on his comm he's already got the stealth gen on board so it looks like we could be getting a bit of aggression Rambo comm action maybe coming out from Congreve always welcome upgrade there now started on Gently's ACU as well so the upgrades now on the way thick and fast another one from flexible they've all decided to go at the same time around the 10 minute mark hotly contested battle this and yet not a lot of movement on the ground at all and now would you look at this Nikulic siphons off a massive force from his front line and sends them over to the east to join his teammates and this will put a lot of extra pressure on flexible and aero clouds trying to defend this area of the map congreve has also siphoned off some troops and sent them in that direction they're going to stop in the middle and take out an engineer at the foot of the ramp there you can see this has been a nice little grab from eternity who's walled off the ramp up onto the middle plateau he's got mass extractors in the area working on all of those mass points but they're only tech one wise decision central plateau of course on open palms incredibly difficult to hold on to flexible still anchored to the spot he's got the personal stealth on board gently has also got personal stealth and the gun upgrade and it looks like they might be thinking about making a move now with flexible anchored to the spot aero clouds coming in with a very sizable group of auroras but he really wants to be thinking about microing them they don't stand up brilliantly toe to toe you want to use the range as best you can on board but he'll be very conscious and flexible getting cut off from the rest of the team at the moment team one's not at all focused on flexible's acu wondering if that'll be a mistake as flexible still rooted to the spot his upgrade's about to finish but suddenly they turn their attention to him the upgrade is going to complete aero cloud to set spamming energy towards it to help him finish it flexible down into the yellow on around 4700 he ducks in behind what used to be a t1 pd that goes pop just as he passes it eternity and gently pursuing on forward they sense blood right here but they could be just about to run out of units we've got more units coming in from the other side of the map from the quillage all of the rally points seem to be set to somewhere in this region now team one definitely feel like they've got flexible cornered and a little bit more pressure they should be able to run over this complex and destroy just about everything in fact they're very close to a kill here flexible about to go into the red there we go we get in some specters coming in from aero clouds but it's going to be too little too late this flexible Drops in below a thousand hit points. They've managed to snag a kill here. And there goes the first ejection from the game. Flexible bows out at 12 minutes and 40 seconds. And now Aero Clouds is going to have to back off. 
I like that. A quick send of what resources he had left back over to his teammate before he lost control there. Don't often see an awful lot of that. But very nice play indeed from Team 1 there. Gives them a 3-2 to two player advantage. And if they can roll in with some build capacity, they've got a lot of reclaim to grab. And, of course, the mass points as well. But Mercy's now being brought to bear on Gently, who stoops into the yellow. 5,000 hit points remain. They're coming in one after another. This could be a counter pop on the cards here. But no more mercies inbound. Just a couple more would have done it. 3,000 hit points left. Gently escapes with his life. If I were him, I would carry on moving back to base. Just a couple more mercies. I'm guessing uh, Aero Clouds thought that he had produced enough. And that was going to be a kill for certain. Might not have been taking into account the extra hit points on the con from the upgrades. But then it's only 13,000. It's only 1,500 hit points more than base, I think. Or there's 10,000 on a... Maybe it's 2,000 more. But either way, he was on about 3k. So it would have taken one more mercy to do it. Congreve now sitting in the center trying to operate defensively for his own base and aero clouds who was busy of course off on this side of the map the quillich not going straight after the main base we have three cerberus turrets in operation over here for congreve so instead looking for chinks in the armor over in this direction but this is now potentially a huge advantage for team one who are still behind in total amass crude 79k to 83 over the course of the game but they do have an advantage on generated eco and that advantage is set to increase now that they're in control of flexible's old base couple more mass points due to be picked up as well let's see who's been more efficient so far well team one unquestionably with the destruction of flexible there 41k mass killed there compared to 22k from team two not surprising with the ejection of the first player there that result very typical Troops now coming across the central plateau from Eternity. Team 1 looking to put the final nail in the coffin here. T2 Engineers throwing together Oblivion turrets in the center for Aero Cloud. Congreve with his personal stealth gen. Very conscious about the amount of pressure that's coming down the middle and being brought to bear on his ally. Much more conscious of the threat that could be lying in wait on the other side of the map. But Nikulic really doesn't seem to be pushing very hard. You can see him in the background there, keeping his distance from Congreve's base. Mantis still rolling in over the plateau and literally just being crucified by the oblivion turrets as they come into range at this point this is a bit of a wasted exercise they need some mobile missile launchers in on the case or something if they hope to dislodge this front line there's just not enough coming south in terms of tech for them to hope to breach so we do have t2 on the field there for eternity and of course We've actually got T3 on the ground up here for Gently, as of course you'd expect us to be sitting on some kind of tech at 17 minutes. And of course T2 there for Nequilich. Definitely need to be looking at some mobile missile launchers or some Tech 3 mobile artillery to try and breach this front line that's being erected at the front of Aero Cloud's base. Very much get the feeling that with this 
small victory that Team 1 have had on this side of the field. They're going to want to push in and kill off Aero Clouds first before working on Congreve. Congreve is at T3 ground as well. He's got a band of loyalists, three of them on the field in front of Aero's base, rolling in and just chomping on Mantis that are definitely moving in the wrong direction. That is a pointless, pointless move there. Bringing those in on the loyalists. Not a lot of air power on the field. Neither team focusing on it in any way, shape or form. I feel that's a uh, lost opportunity there for Eternity. You could be really focusing on it now that Aero Clouds has been forced into a pretty defensive ground game as a potential strategy tech mismatch there. Get some T3 air on the go, bring in some strap bombers, but one loyalist from Congreve making it into the nook, and this will set back any plans, potentially, for Eternity. He's got engineers working on lots of T1PD, and surprisingly, he managed to get those online. Mantis roll in as well to deal with it, so I spoke too soon. That loyalist actually gets very little done indeed. A quick uh, order of attack waypoints would have dealt with the build capacity and prevented the P1, T1 PDs from going online. And the other loyalist in the area as well is going to get taken out eventually by a Medusa shell. Gently still in control of the northeastern plateau. Congreve still in control of the southwestern. And I like what I see here. Mobile missile launchers trying to evade the zappers that have been put up on the front line there by Nequillage by getting in around the edge. They're still going after the zappers. I suppose if they can continue to chomp on it from this side, then this zapper cannot assist in defense. Another loyalist breaching up past the central plateau from Congreve, meanwhile, is uh, under Jester attack. Congreve slowly working on the Jesters with T1 Inties, but absolutely nothing coming forward from Eternity in terms of air defense. He is now at T2 air and starting to work on some Corsairs. Probably wants to start work on some more power generation as well. And uh, Cockreef getting some work done here. I mean, he's not being astoundingly effective, but what he, he is doing, he's tying up APM and units from Team 1, focusing them on the center of the map, doing anything he can to keep any of the offensive units away from him or Aerocloud. Very nice to see indeed. Another Loyalist makes it through with just 284 hit points left and four kills to his name. We'll get in around the back and should manage to pick off that engineer and take out the mass extractor, stalling any development in that area. We do have a engineer making its way to the bottom right-hand corner for Congreve as well to claim those mass extractors down there, which have been largely empty for the entire game. Another lone loyalist battling up front for Congreve. I'm starting to see some more mobile missile launchers on the field now. But the Rhinos will finish off the Loyalist. But still, no real forward direction of travel for Team 1. Taking another look at the eco side of things. Well, they are in the lead now in total eco gained. 145 to 138, but they're behind in generated eco which is uh, quite astounding, really. 150 to 178 when you consider that they're on four bases and Team 2 are on two bases. They are not spending enough time ecoing, that is for certain. Game quality in this one, incidentally, we never mentioned was at 84%. Uh, Aero Clouds, one of the or the lowest rated player still remains. We've lost flexible, but of course Congreve, a 2,000 rated player. And uh, there is a much bigger difference really between the 1,500 
rated players uh, players and the 2,000 rated players, then between the 1,000 rated players and the 1,500 rated, it's sort of like a, an exponential scale of uh, excellence, if you will. So uh, it's not an exact science, but certainly if they had the option, they would wanted to have uh, taken out Congreve. Goes without saying. I really get the feeling as the action just falls off a cliff in this one. Like, Team 1 just don't know what their next move should be. They're starting to build up on T3 units over here. We're starting to see some loyalists there for Gently. We do have a brick in the mix over there as well, but this could be a nice counter push heading up the center from Team 2. Those wall sections that we saw earlier from Eternity have been destroyed. All but one of the T1 mass points have been destroyed. There are four loyalists lying in wait from Gently trying to protect Eternity, who is wide open at the moment. We do have a air wing of Corsairs inbound now, but they're going to take some banger fire. Quite a lot of bang of fire, in fact, and they are going to get absolutely wiped out after that first pass. <laughs> Eternity can't believe how much flak Congreve is packing there. Taking another look at killed mass. Team 1 still ahead, but that differential is changing. It's down to 9k now between these two teams. Definitely moving in the wrong direction for Team 1, who should have an advantage here. Nikulic just have to, had to pull his commander out to help defend the front of Eternity's base. Coming in with the overcharge. He's only got the T2 engineering suite on board. He has to be really careful because things can turn nasty in a second when you're facing such large T3 odds. What kind of power regen are we talking he's not got a lot of excess power in there needs to be very careful indeed instantly the loyalists open up and his hit points begin to evaporate we have a couple more loyalists coming in from gently from the north and that was very close indeed Nikulic backs off and starts work on a P gen that was a very ill-advised certainly kept the Wolves from the proverbial door, though. And if they'd lost the Quillage, this game would have been over. Congreve with a free run straight up the middle in towards Eternity's base. And Gently, really, without the ability to do anything about it. Fascinating game, this one so far. Yep, admittedly not the most balanced game we've seen, but uh, our 2,000 rated player, Congreve, is fighting superior odds. They're down a player and down on map control as well. But the amount of loyalists that Congreve is pumping out, if you look at his individual mass total, 169, that's way out in front of everybody else's pretty significant and if we switch that back to team view because I know you guys prefer it makes life a lot easier Congreve back here he started work on a monkey lord but this doesn't look great Tons of Vipers from the Quillage starting to make ground over here. We do have the odd Zapper in the area. But bit by bit, the static emplacements are going pop. The Quillage rolling back out over to that side of the map with his ACU. He's thrown up a couple of power generators, power generators, sorry, shield generators at the front of Eternity's base. 
but uh, they're not currently protecting anything. I'm guessing uh, that's uh, in case Eternity wants to get out front and defend. He's got to think about it because well, there's a line of loyalists with the odd brick in there as well from Gently. There's nothing else preventing another frontal assault up the middle. He has, however, transitioned to T3 air. We have a couple of strap bombers on the field. And now an ASF, no, sorry, ASF, an interceptor out as well. So he's not choosing to produce T3 fighters as yet. Just relying on T1 air power. Maybe perhaps doesn't want to give the game away as to what he's got going. This could be a snipe he's gearing up for. But he really is relying on his two teammates to play the ground game. He's not sending an awful lot in their direction. He's really got to make these strap bombers pay. See what they can see on their side of things. So when they've got power online, they're getting intel over here and they did see the commander for a second. Congreve's commander under the shield gen over there. And they've got a read on Aero Clouds as well, who's sitting behind his defenses there. Was well, sitting right next to the power gens, but moves forward into the other shield. Well, he's just bouncing back and forth between the two. So we're up to four revenants now. And out comes a spy plane, a couple of them in fact, so we could be about to see a move from Eternity. And Congreve completes a Monkey Lord. And the waypoint sets straight out towards the front of Nequilich's base. What does Nequilich have on the ground? We've got a few Cerberus turrets in place. We do have some bricks. Attack missile battery. set up and already hurling missiles long range after Congreve's T3 mexes. A zapper taking the majority of the sting out of those. Those revenants from Eternity are on the move. They've spotted the Monkey Lord. It looks like they're inbound and have a solution on it. Uh, this will take a chunk out of the health there. They seem to drop just short, don't connect properly, they've taken about 3,000, no sorry, about 7,000 hit points off the experimental there. We need to come in for a second run which will hopefully be a bit more accurate. There's a lot of flak on the ground here, obviously won't fare quite as well against the strap bombs as it did against the Corsairs. That's a better bombing run. Takes it down to around 55% of base HP. Where is Nequilich's com? Well, he's evac'd it very sensibly, but could he be about to lose his base? This would be absolutely disastrous for Team 1, but the Monkey Lord is going down into the red now. We need those Revenants to come back in if Nequilich is going to hold on to his base, and he does manage to finish off the spider bot however there are still loyalists causing problems slightly further to the east but there is actually quite a lot of defensive fire coming out from the Cerberus tur turrets as well as the odd brick in there as well for Nequilich gently rolling in with some T3 units that were helping helping to defend that central plateau just a moment ago so Nequilich taking some damage you can see the peppered, bruised front line of his base there, but holds on to the majority of his structures. However, Congreve does have some trebuchets in the picture. We've got three of them, or four of them, in fact, up here for Congreve. So easy enough for them to roll back and forth and continue to harass. Over in the right, Aero Clouds has uh, been under sustained attack. He's lost that battery of four Oblivion turrets. 
gently has been probing backwards and forwards with his loyalists and his bricks. Another attack inbound now. There are a lot of harbingers on the field. And you've got a nice formation up of bricks. That's pretty good at chewing through the shields and the armor on board those harbingers. They would like to avoid the oblivion turret fire as well, if at all possible, but I don't think I don't think Aero Clouds is gonna pursue and give up the advantage of that defensive fire and once again the level of activity drops now looking at the back eternity has been busy setting up shop has got t2 mass extractors set up on everything that has dramatically improved his mass totals he's back up to around a hundred congreve with two of the rear mass points here the other one has uh, been given to aero clouds and a crab under construction is immediately spotted by gently who alerts his allies to it just got to feel the longer this goes on the less the advantage matters for team one Congreve now on 267 generated mass per tick. That compares to around, well, it was 204 and then that jumped to 222, but I don't know if that's reclaim related or not. Team 1 still with an overall advantage, though, in uh, total mass collected. 381 to 354. But uh, a massive advantage in generated eco in favor of Team 2. 480 to 444. Pretty significant differential there between these two teams. That's a lot of mobile missile launchers up on the plateau in the southwest. Control K of the redundant T1 P gens in the base there for Congreve, who no doubt will get to work reclaiming them whilst building or carrying on working on that ion reactor. And we have T3 air on the field for him now as well as we see a spy plane roll out towards the east of the map. just not enough pressure from team one just not enough at all they should be working on massive amounts of t3 units they should be working on experimentals aero clouds is uh, steadily building a formidable force of harbingers down here tactical missile defense going up and a Colossus who uh, is sitting on around 50% complete so far. Only with one or two NGs working on it currently. Trebuchets from Nequilich working against some of the units on the plateau from Congreve who has withdrawn the Vipers to a safer position. No doubt because of the trebuchet fire. That crab we saw earlier from Congreve nearly complete now. 103,000 hit points and climbing of the 110,000 required for completion. Attack missile battery online for eternity up here at the top. have a megalith nearly complete for Nequilich as well that goes into the green as we zoom in on it so it's going to be one megalith a piece over on this side of the map between Nequilich and Congreve more T3 units more bricks rolling into the frame 
from Gently as well, and a large contingent of Harbingers being dispatched to that side of the map as well. Gently alerting his allies that he's going to try and attack because the Harbingers are breaking off on this side of things for Aero. He's got a lot of bricks, but I don't know if he's got enough. Banks of T1 point defense going up back here for Aero Clouds. Vitally important that he gets the formation in place, which he's done. One Harbinger down, and another one follows it. So that Megalith completed for Congreve over in the center. Congreve now working on a quantum gateway as well, and uh, I might have spoken too soon. This stands a chance of a breakthrough here for Gently. Some nice skirmishing. Oh, maybe not. Just not quite enough. And a large donation, I think, from Gently. That whole band of bricks with the few loyalists were mixed in, transferred over to Nequilich's control. There's Vipers brought forward on the plateau from Congreve. Nequilich is going to want to get those trebuchets anchored behind shield coverage and return fire, but Congreve, no fool, of course, not going to stand there and wait for that return fire. So a lot of skirmishing going on here at the 36 minute mark. Still no commitment from either team in any major attack whatsoever. Another Megalith underway from Congreve whilst he's also working on an upgrade on his commander. Of course the onus in a situation like this is always going to be on the team that has the map control, that has the extra man. You are expectant of them to push and the longer you wait the more you run the risk of your opponents building up and that is really what they've done in this one they haven't managed to gain any major advantage although what's interesting eternity has now managed to pick up his eco he's at a 139 generated mass and uh, that has lifted the totals for Team 1. It's now 5.86 to 5.45 in favor of Team 1. We'll take a look at who's been more efficient and it's still Team 1 in the kill totals. There's still that kind of 20k differential that we saw all from the destruction of Flexible all that time ago. In comes Gently with those bricks and I think that bank of oblivion turrets just enough to tip the balance each time. Bricks, of course, will always generally have the advantage against harbingers. One thing Aeroclouds doesn't want to be doing is unnecessarily pursuing those bricks, which will end in them being wiped out, and that's what's happened there. Lots of trebuchet fire heading north from. Congreve, who is about halfway done on that second crab. And you just know this next assault isn't going to gain any ground either. Gently can't quite manage to gather the number of bricks ne necessary to punch a hole in this defense. I mean, he might have been able to, if he'd not donated all of those units over to Nequilich, if he'd stacked everything on this side and pushed, he might have been able to break Aero Clouds' front line. Then the question remains, would that have emboldened Congreve to push once again against Nequilich if there weren't all of these bricks in place? And there are an awful lot of them over on this side of the field. There's an awful lot of trebuchets just softening up that megalith who is going to be needed 
very shortly with a second megalith nearly complete over here. About to go into the green any second now. And that GC we saw complete now from Aeroclouds now rolling up and counter-attacking in the east. Could we see Team 1 finally dislodged from Flexible's old base? Well, there's a long way to go as yet. That Colossus Beam working on those bricks one by one. Of course, the occasional brick being sucked in by those giant claws at the end of each arm on the Colossus. Bricks are rolling in to support one at a time from the background there. But that Colossus still with about 40-45% of its hit points intact. That changes things up as the Revenants come in from Eternity. Colossus down to 33,000 hit points and falling. Aeroclouds comes in to defend with his ASFs. Could we see the first major ASF engagement of the game? I think we're going to. Eternity responds and brings his own in as does Gently. We've seen very little in the air game so far in this one, which may be part of the reason that Team 1 haven't managed to capitalize on the 3-2 to two advantage they've had for so long. The Colossus makes it past the defenses into the main base, but has only a fraction of its hit points left. Still more bricks to contend with, and still the odd strap bomber as well. There it goes, just as gently turns up with some more Corsairs as well. But the number of units there for Gently has been reduced dramatically and now it looks like Congreve is planning a counter-attack as well over in the west. That second crab online is now two crabs to one and the crab that the Quillich has is badly damaged thanks to the sustained trebuchet fire that it's been standing in for about the last three or four minutes. Congreve looking exceptionally dangerous on this side of things. Now a second Colossus nearly complete for Aero Clouds. How has that last attack changed things up? Well, there is now only 6K difference in mass kill between these two teams. Team 2 catching up very, very fast indeed. And I think that total will be narrowed even further by what is coming next. Those two crabs getting into position. The bricks come forward from the Quillage. They're going to eat an awful lot of crab fire. I don't even know if the Quillage is aware that there are now two crabs in place instead of just one. Gently in Eternity, very upset in local chat, in ally chat, sorry. Down goes the Quillich's crab, that's the only real standoff defense he's got against Congreve on this side of the map. They're telling Eternity to spam strap bombers. But one thing Eternity hasn't been doing is spamming much of anything, really. He still doesn't have an awful lot of power to effectively put out a lot of Tech 3 air. And those crabs look set to just roll over Nequilich's base. Nequilich is on the run now with his commander. He had another crab under construction that was near to around 75% complete when the two crabs from Nequilich started opening up on it. There's no way that's going to be allowed to complete. We do have Cerberus turrets working on the most southerly crab, but they're doing very little damage indeed. And the Loyalists now up front for Congreve as well. Congreve with some ASFs on the field are working on the Revenants, but Eternity has a healthy escort force that are tidying up those fighters from Congreve as we speak. Meanwhile, over in the east, a second Colossus with 32 kills rolling forward from Aero Clouds. We've got no choice but to go to split screen now as both 
edges of the map for Team 1 are in absolute peril. Nequillage backing off towards Eternity's base with his commander trying to get under some kind of shield coverage. There might be shield coverage there, but there are no defenses in place whatsoever. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Team 1 with such an advantage just buckling under the combined experimental pressure now from Team 2. Tech 1 bombers being brought in to assault the Colossus. You're pretty well certain that that is desperation when you see that. Attack missiles inbound. That's a pretty gutsy call and a tough one to work, but it's going to connect. You know they're desperate when they're firing attack missiles from that far away, but credit where credit's due from Eternity. That was a fabulous shot, but it's still not enough. That crab is online. 18,000 hit points remain. That forward group of land factories has been annihilated, one of which was the T3 land HQ for Eternity. Not that it really matters. Eternity was putting out nothing in terms of T3 land power. Another wave of TAC missiles inbound. I don't think he's going to be quite so accurate with this one. He does manage to take out a loyalist, but that is all. The Quillage coming in with what last few bricks remain under his control. I don't think he's going to get the kill on that lead crab. It's very close indeed. Just 7,000 hit points remain, but Aero Clouds tearing it up in Eternity's base now with huge amounts of Harbingers. Eternity throws out the GG. He's got that Galactic Colossus coming his way, as has Gently, and neither of them have very much left to combat that. And still, both of those Megaliths online from Congreve. The last five minutes have been an absolute curb stomping from Team 2. Eternity out with his commander. The shield collapses. Surely Aero Clouds should set the attack command. His attention elsewhere doesn't realize that the commander is there right for the plucking. Turns the attention finally onto him and a second GC shows up. Boom, baby. There goes the first player for Team 1. Eternity bows out at 45 minutes and I'm pretty sure the Quillich and Gently are soon to follow as the confluence of experimentals ensues between Congreve and Aero Clouds. The Quillich surely next on the menu we can go back to single screen as the two front lines the two fronts marry up gently back in his main base nearly has a megalith online has been working on a nuke launcher which is nearly done and is now nuking is it going to be allowed to fire no it's not denied and there goes the quillage gently is on the run but he's never going to escape it's all going to go down gently says you bastard there are a few things more upsetting than completing a nuke when I imagine there's very little nuke defense down here let's just take a look do we have any nuke defense in play? Well, you know, as soon as the missile launch, we do actually have one down here, and that has got an anti-nuke in it. So if he'd gone for error clouds, where have we got there? So, yeah, all of that is protected by the strategic missile defense in the main base. And we've got another one down here for Congreve, although there's no nuke in the chamber. So potentially, maybe, could have snagged Congreve. We do have a nuke online as well, so both teams going after nuke production, but they just didn't need it. Team 1 had nothing to combat those experimentals. All completed by two crabs, one lead Galactic Colossus, and a, what was essentially at the time, a, a contingent of loyalists. Fabulous work there from Team 2. Commiserations Team 1, but you just didn't capitalize. Uh, you should have gone into experimental production. They should have focused 
more efforts on one front instead of trying to split it between the two. It gave them too much time to build up, but very fascinating game. I love that one. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. There's always more to come from me in the future. Keep those replays coming in. If you feel so inclined, of course, don't forget you can support me on Patreon. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.